Why do they treat us so bad? Why do they do things just to make us mad? Why do they treat us so bad? Why do they hate us so bad? It's gotta be something deeper. Something deeper, deeper. It's gotta be something deeper, deep, deeper. It's gotta be something deeper, deeper. It's gotta be. They said oppression drives the wise man mad. There's only so much he can take. Oh. So just take a look around you. You'll see so much mental destruction. And no matter how hard I try, I run into a broken system. This life we live has been a lie. We've been taught polluted information. They tried to cut us from our heritage. The greatest people who had. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Let's see those faces, man. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom brother. my brothers shalom. and sisters. Shabbat shalom, everybody. All right. Brother, we'll... sister. Shalom, shalom all. All right. We're going to struggle through this. Um, Let me see now. Yeah, man. If I can see our faces, yeah, I'll be really be glad to miss you all our week. You know? Let's go, man. Turn on them cameras. <laughs> right? Um, so we're going to be praising Yahuwah Boss. today. We're going to be praying Yahuwah today. Uh, praising Yahuwah today. And we're going to be giving him glory and honor and praise. Um, let's see now. Today we're going to be discussing. the I got a princess in the building. Got a princess in the building. What's up? <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. So right. this is what we're going to do now. Hey, brother Darren. Um, so we're going to be, be uh, praising Yahuwah today. Going to give him some glory. But as usual, before we start the proceedings, let's get a word of prayer going on. Brother Shane, if you can unmute your mic, just open today's proceedings. And brother Brandon is not usually late, so that to be something. He's going to be coming in shortly. Right? Just open the proceedings with a word of prayer and pray that Yahuwah will bless bless us and keep us today on this wonderful Shabbat. Yeah, go ahead, Brother Shane. Is, is you waiting on Brother Shane? Um, just just pray, pray for us. Maybe you can't, can't hear me. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Hearing me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Why am I here? I've come before you today. This video, right? Just like to see a person for much. Thank you. For bringing us this far, showing us the new year, putting the old one behind us, putting all the bad things behind us, and moving forward. In your name and your wisdom, and moving in the direction that you want us to move in further. Thank you for bringing us together once again on this blessed day that you have created. 
And this is just a small gist of Father. Of course, remembering we should be doing a whole lot for Father. So I'd like to thank you today for everyone that's here. Mm-hmm. Bring us to open our hearts and minds to receive the word that you just press everyone in this group or family, friends. Yeah, we trust precious in my prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Got a good one today. Got a good one today. Um, so continuing from where we um left off. I mean, one second. Yeah. Continuing from where we left off, we're gonna be talking about issues of the heart. Specifically, we're gonna be testing the heart today. Because we were talking the last two two lessons about the light coming into the light and then exposing the light. So we, we have established that the light hits the heart. So today we're going to be testing the heart to see what's in it. Right? Going to be challenging you um, this morning as we go into the scriptures to see if we can understand what is in our heart right so here we go test of the hearts test of the hearts dethrone the idol sitting on your heart this is the subtopic to dethrone the idol that is sitting on your heart right Things are going to get serious now. We're going to be looking at four points. The tumor of pride is the heart's greatest idol. Oh my. Oh my. That alone is an entire lesson. Light captures and emanates from the heart. The rhythm of the heart is the rhythm of life open heart surgery is needed to break all curses i try to make these things as simple as possible so when you look back at these lessons you understand you're able to teach others you're able to show others the error of their ways and point them to hamashiach not me to hamashiach right So, once again, the tumor of pride is the heart's greatest idol. Light captures and emanates from the heart. The rhythm of the heart is the rhythm of life. Open heart surgery is needed to break all curses. Let's deal with the tumor of the pride of the heart. Cicivelli, Give me Psalms 51.10. Brother Shane, give me Jeremiah 17.19. Brother Darren, give me Proverbs 6, 16 to 7. My wife, give me Psalms 34.18. And I'm going to look at Ezekiel 11.19. All right. So Psalms 51, 10. We're talking about the tumor of pride. Tumor. When we hear the word tumor, we think of cancer. We think of a malignant cancer that attaches itself to one part of our organ. Not good. The tumor of pride. This is what pride is, you know. So pride could be a good thing, but it usually is denotated as something bad and malignant. This is the first sin of creation. Asatan was prideful and he was kicked out of the Shamaim, kicked out of heaven. So when we, as we discussed last night, and so we, we, we powerfully came to that conclusion. When we come and we 
have the light of Hasatan and you don't emanate the light from Yahusha, you're emanating the light of pride because this was the first sin of Hasatan. Pride. Yahuwah says he hates, he hates a proud look. It's the very, very first thing that he calls an abomination to him. So this tumor of pride is the heart's greatest idol. So when you see that spirit of pride, and that is what pride is too, it's a spirit, sits on your heart, it takes up residence. It's its throne. It's his own throne. And it runs and it rules you. I was sticking a while ago. All right, don't worry. Right? Let me just take a pass at the internet to catch up. All right, here we go now. So give me Psalms 5110. Who has that? I have it. Go ahead. In 110. Um, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Stop. We always read that and look over the very obvious thing, you know. Renew mm. a right spirit. Why do you have to renew a right spirit? Because the wrong spirit is sitting on your heart. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You have a wrong spirit sitting on your heart. And I submit to you, the greatest of all these wrong spirit is pride. We're going to make that case today. If you have pride as the spirit sitting on your heart, all the sins you commit, all the sins you partake in, come from this very spirit. I'm going to show it to you. This pride. Give me Jeremiah 17, 9. Who has that? Brother Shane? Jeremiah 17, 9 or 19. 9. 79 Jeremiah 17 verse 9 The art is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it I good the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it you know why the heart so desperately wicked? Apart from the desires of your own flesh, you also have opened up yourself to this spirit, this ruach of pride. Now let me tell you how wicked this pride is, this proud look. Let me get practical. Do you know almost everything you do in this life is determined by how you look? Oh, my, my. I understand. I want to sink in a second. The clothes you wear, <laughs> the car you drive, the job you want to work at, the places you go to eat, the people you talk to that are your friends, <laughs> the places where you associate yourself, even the God you serve, everything you do in this life is about a look. My, 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 my. The, the, the one thing 
If you want to hurt somebody, if you want to humiliate them, is to take away their standing or their look in society. You can destroy a person that way. The Bible says a good name is better kept than it tried to be restored. So there is something to be said about looking good. But what if you took it to the extreme? What if it became an idol and it sat on your heart? <laughs> Do you see how this would be in contrary to what Yahuwah says when he says you have to humble yourselves? So, but no, you're proud. Yahuwah already made it clear in the very first commandment. Thou shall not have any other gods before me. I am telling you, no. It's not other people y'all idolizing, you know. It's yourself. And your look. This was the very first thing that Hasatan realized about himself when he sinned. He said, wait, man, I look good. <laughs> I look good. Yahuwah said he was the most beautiful of all the archangels. And the angels agreed, say, yeah, man, you look good. You sound good too. Proverbs 6, 16 to 17. Who has that? Proverbs 6, 16 to 17. Yeah, that's me. Go ahead. These things that Yahuwah hates. Ye, seven, are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and a shed innocent blood. Keep going. A heart that devises wicked imagination. Mm. Feet that swiftly, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Mm. A false witness that speak, speaketh lies, mm -hmm. and he soweth discord among brethren. These... My son... Keep thy father's commandment and yes. forsake not the law of thy mother. Oh. Bind them continually upon thy heart. Uh -huh. Tie them around thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. When thou awakest, it shall talk to thee. Thanks. Stop there. Stop there. For the command is a lamp. And the law. Oh, you have a slight delay. All right. So look, these six things dot Yahuwah hate. Yes, seven are an abomination. But if you look back at Proverbs 6 and verse um, 13, he winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discard. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Now these six things Yahuwah can't stand. He hate them. It's seven are an abomination. That means all of them are an abomination. A proud look. The very first thing. Right. The entire look. The whole society vain. A woman would take two hours before she leave the house. No, no offense. Some of, some of the man taking over now. A woman would take two hours before she leave the house to make sure everything look perfect. Before anybody can behold her. Like I said, some of the men taking over now. <laughs> a proud look. But let me tell you what a proud look does. A proud look don't listen to nobody. Because you always believe you're right. You always believe your way is the best way. So when somebody comes to correct you, who are you to tell me to operate this way?
So we're gonna close the gate there from your side now. Who are you to tell me to operate this way? So this is what a proud look does. It makes you full of something. It's full of pride. You're prideful. So Yahuwah yeah, now can work with a spirit like that. So now, how does this affect your heart? Let's get back to the main issue of the topic. How does this affect your heart? You see, the spirit of pride sits on, a, on the throne of a man's heart. And this spirit blocks all spiritual communication with the Father. Oh my, my. This spirit blocks all spiritual communication with the Father. The spirit of pride also brings all other spirits to feed on or house the flesh. But hold on, we're going to stick with the first one. The spirit of pride sits. <laughs> The spirit of pride, oh, sister, me, okay, yeah. The spirit of pride sits on the throne of your heart. Okay, now. So now we have established that Yahuwah hates, he detests a proud look. And he also hates lying and all these things that go along with it. But how does pride sit on a man's heart? How does want to allow pride to sit on their heart this is when you reject the teachings of Yahusha and you reject his ways because Yahusha if you look at his life from the very time he entered into this world everything was about humility they said he was born in a manger. We know he's not really a manger now, but he's an inn. We'll, we'll, we'll take that for now. Let me work with the manger story for now. Right? But the idea of a manger is nothing fancy. This is not no hush gosh, gosh crib in no fancy um, um, house, six bedroom house. He was born in a lowly place. He was born in the most give, give, give me one second here. he was born in one of the most lowest of places Nazareth as the prophet said can any good thing come out of Nazareth my oh my oh my and to top it all off he was a carpenter who had no house. I hope this thing not sticking, you know. Oh my goodness. It is? Hold on, hold on. Let me... Okay, I see something moving here. Yes. And to top it all off, he was a carpenter who had no house. Foxes have holes. <laughs> Birds have nests. But the son of man had no way to lay his head. For all we know, Yahusha had very few changes of clothes. Because he traveled a lot. He went to many places. He was the epitome of humility. Maybe I'll miss it, you know. But Yahuwah sleep in bush. Oh. Yahusha slept in the bush. Do you know anybody that sleeps in the bush? <laughs> Are you friends with anyone right now that sleeps in the bush? I submit to you. I guarantee you, you will not be friends with that person. Because it will look good to you. Brother Shane, you're saying, you know, somebody. <laughs> hey. 
I, I submit to you, you will not be friends with that person today. And you wonder why Yahusha said, did you look out for, for those who are homeless, those who can't clothe themselves? Did you look out for those people? You wonder why? Yahusha walked this earth with no trappings of the world. So as a result of him walking with no trappings, nothing could trap his heart. Oh, God. Nothing could trap his heart. Nothing was allowed to sit on the throne of his heart. It's just he, the 12 disciples, Bush, Nature, and Yah. I mean, I'm hitting too hard this morning, you know. Maybe I'm a little, oh, maybe I'm a little too rough. <sighs> maybe I'm too rough. It's just him, the bush, his 12 disciples, and yeah. Every now and again, they go catch two fish. Every now and again, Yahushua will turn up a bread and multiply it. It's not much. You never hear. Show me one part in the scripture you see Yahusha rolling in any fine chariot. I was ushered in and somebody back and, and, and they're fanning him. I remember seeing a donkey. Oh, who, who, who rides a donkey? <laughs> what the type of people we know that ride a donkey? Come, let, let, let me talk straight, man. Is that the old people? Children? <laughs> or somebody that just, just well, you know, really up there in life, as we would put it. Yeah, we should came... The king of kings went on a donkey. And he's joking you now. In at this, you know, sometimes we say, oh, you can take shame elsewhere. You know, you know how people leave their country and go and take shameful jobs elsewhere. Nothing not wrong with that because you won't do it back home. You know? Like, like a lot of Antiguans go to the States and you, you, you hear that they, they, they're a sweep gutter and they're doing what they do, it got to do to survive. You wouldn't do that back home. But Yahushua coming back home to Nazareth on a donkey. Okay. Listen, <laughs> y'all need to take time and look at these things, you know. Coming back home on a donkey. And you wonder why the same people that were throwing branches to usher him in. 24 hours later saying crucify him, crucify him. Like, he, he ain't nobody. No, no, we start putting two together now. Look, look, can anything good come from Nazareth? After all, the man just come here on a donkey, you know. Yahusha was humble unto the point of death. That when they spat at him, when they pierced him to the side, when they crucified him, he said, Father, yeah, don't charge them. Don't lay this on them. Yahusha reminded Peter when they came for him, look, I can call 10,000 angels right now, you know, and just done them, you know. I can call 10,000 angels right now and done them. But I have to be humble and to death. The spirit of pride blocks all spiritual communication with the Father. Psalms 34, 18. Who has that? Oh, I do. Go ahead. Um. Yahuwah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> so yeah, Yahuwah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. So who is he far from? We just read it. He hate proud people. Oh, my. 
You know, it's not touching the line part and the shedding of blood and all that other thing. I just touching the pride. I just touching the pride. He hate proud people. So he is nigh. Mute my gift this way. He is nigh unto those people who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. broken heart and contrite spirit so when you have a broken heart you see when you go now and you start to examine it and you look at it and you you say tal no i have a heart for yahuwah i hate my pride i hate the way i treat people i hate the way i'm always looking out for myself i hate the way i'm always elevating frivolous things in society we get excited about sports, money. We get excited about music. We get excited about stuff that will not last. And you wonder why Yahuwah is not drawing nigh to you. Are you excited? Do you get excited about loving people? Feeding the poor and the hungry? Do you get excited about opening the scriptures and learning of Yahuwah? Do you get excited about asking the Ruach to fill you? So that you can perform his good works? Do you get excited about seeking justice for those who have none? Are the latest Jordan come out, that, that is what gets you. The latest, the latest Gucci bag come out. That, that's that, that's what get you rolling. Or we can talk about politics or sports. Stuff that will not last. So when Yahuwah is ready to speak to you now. You know, one of the worst... Look, look, let me tell you something. One of the worst things. I remember when I was dating, you know. But the worst thing you can do is to date an airhead. It go both ways, you know. <laughs> it go both ways, man and woman, an airhead. Imagine you you see this pretty, 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 pretty woman, or this handsome man on the outside, and you sit down to have a conversation, and you're like, huh? You serious? No substance, nothing at all to offer. Right? And you ready to have this this wonderful communion with this person i'm not talking about sex but this wonderful communion with this person and they have nothing they're just like tingling brass empty cymbals crickets she just uh he just seems superficial he all about himself look at the man the man talking about himself for the last half hour he never asked me nothing about me and how's my day hey eh? Ah, uh, she talk about how she how she loves spend money. Eh, eh, red flag. <laughs> hey, red flag. Hey, no, I'm saying to you, brethren, how can Yahuwah speak to you when you're always talking about what he don't want to talk about? Oh, my, my, my. How can Yahuwah draw nigh to you? If you always dry night to something else, it's like you're on a date, you invite this woman to a date, and she on her phone 27, 24-7. She's not even looking at you, she just on the phone. Baby, what we carry on here? We spend my good money. Next thing you know, she, she, she probably want lobster or something. Uh, well, we don't eat them things now, but you know how you was back in the day. Are they the most expensive meal, but she on the phone. Yahuwah says the same thing with you. That's why Yahuwah referred to Israel as a whore, you know. A whore. Hear them rough word, word, words there. I am coming to draw nigh to you, and your heart is elsewhere. Your heart belongs to something and somebody else. And you wonder why when you pray and you ask the Father for deliverance, he don't hear you. 
Because your heart won't fix. Oh my goodness. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. Who has that? Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. Brother Danny, that's you? Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. Well, I'll read that. I'll read that. I think that's me. And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. And give them a heart of flesh. Hold on a second here, man. What I want to focus on in this verse is the fact that Yahuwah has to put a new spirit within you and take out a stony heart. What could possibly make this heart so stony? Stony. You know, stony means more than one stone, you know. I need you all to look cl- closely at this. Pay attention now. Stony means more than one stone. A stone is a stone. Stony means plenty, hey, plenty, plenty stone in this heart. This is the third point in this in, 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 in this um, score. The spirit of pride brings all other spirits to feed and host the flesh. Oh my, 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 my. Y'all turn with me to Luke chapter 11, verse 26. Let me see if I can put this up on the screen. Luke chapter 11. Are we looking at verse 23 coming down? Hear this, hear this story here now. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, (laughs) he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He said, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. And then sweep this house clean. Then goeth he and take it to him seven other spirits. This is the stony come now, not stone, stony. Because <laughs> it's more than one. Seven other spirits more wickeder, more wicked than himself. Caribbean people say wickeder. I want to say wicked, wickeder. Right? Wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse. Is worse than the first. Listen, man. Listen, man. I I want you to look at this carefully. Look at this carefully. Do you know which is... The Bible didn't say which spirit this is, you know. I submit to you, this spirit have a name. This is the spirit of pride. Let me tell you something about pride now. Pride is not aggressive. Pride is the instigator of all things. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I want you all pay attention. We're going deep with this one. Going deep with this one. If pride is the very first thing that Hasatan did and was thrown out, who is the instigator of our sin in this world? Mr. Pride himself, Hasatan. Let me show you how this thing work. Let me show it work. Y'all ever watch them? Game of Thrones type movie. It is never the power that you see that is the real power, you know. 
It is always the power behind the scene. Oh, Lord have mercy. If you ask Donald Trump, he not really run the show, you know. It's a deep state. It's a government within. <laughs> I want you to follow me. The Yahoo open your eyes to see this. When you watch these Game of Thrones type movies, you always have somebody who know he's not in line to the throne, you know. But he is the voice and reason of the person who is next in line. So he will use this man. They're known as puppet masters. He will use this ear, to, the ear apparent, who is to become king. And when he becomes king, he pulling the strings from behind the scene. So he gets his will done, whether good or bad. And there's a person there on the throne there getting all the blame. Oh my. Sticking again? Okay, hold on. Let me hold on. Let me hold on one second. Still sticking? You came back? Alright, go ahead. We're going to finish this, man. Don't worry, man. They will not get the glory here. Yes, so it's a person, as I said, behind the scene, pulling the strings. This is what pride does. This is why it's so hard to find among all the sins. Because it is the sin, that spirit of pride, is the one that controls all the other spirit. Because this sin knows you love how you look, and you're a selfish person, all other sins will correlate around him. So pride is that spirit, just like Hasatan, that speaks into the ear of Eve. You sure Yah said you will not surely die? Pride is a whisperer. He's a sneaky son of a, I won't say it. Comes in in a kind of way, like coming through the back door like a thief and all your decisions are based upon how you look to appease pride so when the script huh sticking again all right no problem i'll come back in one second then when it comes in all right okay good right so when the scriptures say that this spirit goes out this is the spirit of pride you know and take it to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there yeah. keep skipping yeah. all right hold on hold on let me give it a second let me give it a second let me give it a second am i back Okay, all right. No problem. Yeah. So, where am I now? Yeah. Give me one second. So, then go it out he and take it himself. Seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So, pride now, because you're prideful, you go and bring envy. You go and bring hate. You go and bring malice. You go and bring lust. Pride knows how to pull these spirits, these other stones. And set up residence in your heart. And now you're worse than before. Still sticking? So if you were a humble person... These spirits could not attach themselves to you. These spirits could not attach themselves to you. Right? 
Let me just take a second here. Why? Everything stick. You hear me still? Okay, good. All right, good. Well, I'm not sticking, but I just want to make sure y'all are hearing me still. Okay? Ah, boy. We're going to get through this, man. Let's hold on. Let me just see if this, this thing is just a passing. A passing thing. All right. Y'all yeah, yeah, hear me? I see the bike tall moving there, boy. No, I hear you loud and clear. You know, I don't know. Um... Okay, good. It, it, there's a slight lag, but not bad at all. Okay, good, 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 good. Come here. All right, good. As once y'all can see me, good, good. All right, let me continue. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm gonna let the devil get the victory here, Tal. All right, so here we go. So as I said, now the spirit now, as a result, brings all other spirits to feed, to feed and house the flesh, because the flesh always craves. The flesh always desires and pride knows how to facilitate this. This is why Yahuwah hates pride, a proud look so much. Because it damages and destroys the heart. Oh my goodness. Light captures and emanates from the heart as we discussed before. Let me show you how the heart is a conduit for light. Brother Danny, give me 1 Samuel 16, 7. 16 verse 7. Brother Darren, if you're still there, give me Matthew 15, 18 to 20. And Sister Veli, give me Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21 verse 2. Yeah, 1 Samuel 16 to 17. 6, 6, 16, 7, sorry. I'm your mic, brother Danny. Uh, yes, sir. Um, 1 Samuel um, chapter 16, verse 7 reads, But Yahweh said to Shemuel, Do not look at his appearance mm. or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For not as man sees, for man looks at the eyes, but Yahweh looks at the heart. Oh, my, 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 my. Would you look at that? Don't look at his, his outward countenance. Don't look on his countenance. I'll tell you, Yah Yahweh just can't stand most people, you know. Yahoo just can't stand a man full of pride and full of himself, you know. Can't stand it at all. Yahoo hates, hates, hates a boastful man. Say, but look, say, don't look at his countenance or the height of his stature because I have refused him. For Yahuwah see it not as man see it. For man look it on the outward appearance. But Yahuwah looks on the heart. You see the heart is a conduit for light. Which light is coming in? That's up to you. If you allow the proud look to come in. If you allow the proud look of Hasatan to come in, that is the light you're going to be emanating. And you become boastful and, and, and wasteful with Yah's grace and mercy. Oh my. But if you allow Yahuwah to sit on the throne of your heart, you must emanate no, his light. You must emanate his light. Right? 
She said, don't look at it. See, I'm Hallelujah. the one that looks at the heart. Give me Matthew 15, 18 to 20. Because I'm going to show you that the heart also functions well with the right light. Give me Matthew 15, 18 to 20, Brother Darren. But, but those things which the mouth commit forth from the heart, uh -huh. and they defile it and the man. Oh, oh my. Out of the oh heart my. proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, uh -huh. fornication, uh -huh. thefts, witness, blasphemies. These are the things which they a man but to eat okay i got you so now we, as we just discussed earlier about the stony heart which means more than one stone so this spirit of pride is that sneaky little sin that 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 sin that pulls all the other sins to it that is how powerful this this spirit of pride is so you see, oh, so when you see that spirit of pride <laughs> sits on your heart, out of it now comes all these issues, adulteries, murder, fornication. Oh, you, you, you see, you see how this thing going? So the heart functions well with the right light and it doesn't function with the wrong one. Oh my, my. You're going, you must emulate a light because as we just said, the heart is a conduit for light. So which light is going to be coming out? What are you going to be spewing out of your heart? Are there the desires of your flesh? Or are there the issues of life that Abaya puts into you that you are supposed to shine like a light on this, on, on this wicked generation that there is today? What, what are you going to do when Yahuwah starts to search your heart? Oh, my. Oh, we got a new guest there. Who's that? Oh, yes, Brother Brandon's wife. Please welcome Brother Brandon's wife and Brother Shane's fiance. And I don't, I don't mean to be rude because we're all about Welcome. family here. Right? Can't see Brother Shane's fiance too good, but you can't decide. But it's all right. You know, she's there and we welcome you um, to, to the lesson. But as I continue, I want to, we're we kind of sticking a bit, but just bear with me with this, um, um, as, as we try to, um, go forward and, and preach as word today. Um, I'm going to have to do some serious editing, but with Yaz willing, am I sticking still? I'm sticking again. Okay. All right. Let me just give it a second. Every now and again, I'll just have to pause. Um, for the, the lesson to catch up. Right? Today's a very high windy day in Antigua and um, our internet is not the best when the wind is high. Right? Um, yeah. I'm thankful still we don't have 5G. <laughs> Alright? Okay, bear with me now. Oh, it got... It, it went... I just get cut out. Hold on, they go cut back in. Hold on, hold on. All right, it refreshed itself. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, everybody's there. Okay, good. All right, let's continue now. So, like, like I said, now light captures and emanates from the heart. It's a conduit. The heart functions well with the right light and the heart exposes its holder. Let me read again Matthew 15, 8, 18 to 20. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile the man. Proverbs 21, 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes but Yahuwah pondereth the heart. My goodness. This comes with the mm. last point. The heart exposes its holder. Who are you? What is the character of a man? Yah says, this is how I know. I look at the heart. 
because out of it are the issues of life. What is important to you? That's right. That is what you will have a heart for. That is what you would love. Your desires are linked, directly linked, is directly linked to what your heart leans towards. I love sports. <laughs> I love um, a good conversation. I used to love politics. You understand? A man will speak of what he loves. You will see a man that, that he looks as if, my goodness, why are he boring boy? But you get him on the right topic and you can't get him to shut up <laughs> because you're talking about what he loves. That's right, that's right. That's I right. just wonder, I just wonder, when the topic of Abaya comes up, are you that excited? Can they get you to shut up? <laughs> because now you're talking about the king of kings, your redeemer, your savior, the one who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you get excited to talk about him? Or is it the latest Beyonce video? Or it's what Trump is doing? Barack Obama, is he still on the scene? <laughs> you know, what, what, what is the latest thing going on with this coronavirus? Let me tell you something. The devil is so, so skillful in, in getting us distracted. He will get you to talk about everything other than yeah. Abaya. Look at the course of the hours of the day. Do you believe that you focus on Yahuwah most of the hours of the day? Oh, man. This is how you know if you have a spirit, a wrong spirit on your heart. Listen, I know you got to work. You have to make bread. You have to take care of your children. But I'm asking you, of the hours of the day, is your mind on Abaya? Listen, when you're in a new relationship, you just met that one that you think, hey, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Let me show you how we're hypocritical. That, that special someone. You just meet them, you know, the relationship like maybe four, five days old. When you go to work, you're working on who you're thinking about. Man. When you're on the ball field, <laughs> as a man, you're playing sports. Who are you still thinking about? You are thinking about your beloved. They're constantly on your mind. Come on, man. I'm you know, it. it's a sad thing now after you, you're done second down and get married. It's, it's, it's usually not the same kind of passion, you know, but... We'll talk about it another time. But at least <laughs> when you started out, I can't get enough of this, this person, man. You're consumed. Does Abaya consume your thoughts this way? If he doesn't, then something else is sitting <clears throat> on the throne of your heart. Something else has captured your imagination. Because as we just said, the light, the heart must emulate a light. And I'll show you this. Here's why it must emanate. Because the, the heart has a rhythm. <laughs> The heart has a rhythm. Oh, y'all don't know how serious this rhythm is, you know. The heart follows the beat of the djembe. All right. In your King James Version, these wicked translators, translators that still have us in a trance, they would 
they would um, usually translate the word when you see tinkling symbol okay. and and the tinkling symbol and and what's the other word? Um, give give me one second. When you see the tambourine. word, yes, tambourine, right? They're actually referring to the djembe. Mm -hmm. All right, they're actually referring to the djembe. They don't want that word djembe in the Bible because that word djembe too black. That word djembe mm -hmm. is too African. It is too African. Let me refer you to this article right here. Let me see if I can read it real quick. Um, it's a Christian article here. Um, let me see. Reform worship. Uh, but they, were, they had a nice little brief history on, on the djembe. Um, Drumming is rooted, they said, in our earliest biblical worship traditions. The frame drum, or the djembe, the Hebrew tuf, mentioned 17 times in scripture is commonly mistranslated at least i'm glad the christian people them see it as tambourine or timbrel the jingly instrument we know as a tambourine today did not come into existence until the roman period according to archaeologists and biblical mm. scholars the instrument referred to in the Old Testament is a large frame drum, about 12 to 22 inches across its face. It was often played by the women in both um, secular and religious contexts. Um, hope I'm not sticking again. Hebrew women such as Miriam, Exodus 15, 20-21, appropriated the same drum in the worship of yahweh continuing to do so at least until the period of the babylonian captivity and possibly beyond the sound of drumming in combination with the the um blowing of hollow ram's horns or the shofar cymbals and dancing were among the earliest ways our spiritual ancestors worship um abaya so the sound of the drumming reminds us of our roots as Christians. All right. Just to give you some context. Look at 1 Chronicles 15, 29. 1 Chronicles 15, 29. Right? Um, but let's start at... Um, let's start at verse 28 first. Right? It says, Thus... Um, Brother Brandon, read that to me now. First Chronicles 15 from verse 28 and 29. Open that sticking again. All right. All right. First Chronicles chapter 15. What verses again, brother? Uh, verse 28 and verse 29. What, what verses? <clears throat> Verse 28 to verse 29. All right. Okay, it says, Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting mm. and with the sound of the cornet and with trumpets and with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. Mm. And it came to pass as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out at a window, saw King David dancing and playing. And she despised him in her heart. Where? Where did she despise him? You want me to keep reading? No, no, no. Where did she despise him? Oh, it's good. In her heart. My goodness. In her yes, heart. <laughs> what is it about mm. this way of dancing and this drum beat that affected this woman so much that she despised him in her heart right away we see that this woman had a heart issue because she was not flowing to the rhythm of the djembe oh my, my. Let, me, let me let me see if i can bring this bring some clarity to this Ephesians 5.19 Ephesians 5.19 Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns 
and spiritual songs singing and making melody where in your heart to yahuwah <laughs> let me tell you something right if you don't have the song of yah in your heart you're in trouble you're off beat you're out to timing <laughs> You will you will see somebody in timing and despise them. <laughs> you will That's see right. somebody in Come tune on. with Abaya and loathe them. <laughs> because you now you see if she Miriam, if she were if if if, if Saul's um daughter there, if she had that song in her heart she would have understood what she was seeing. But she despised him. She despised Shaul, who we call Saul. Because she, she never sang these hymns. She don't know where Abaya brought her, her from. You see, if Yah has brought you from a place where you thought you would have been destroyed, where you should have been dead already. David was exiled from his kingdom. They were laughing him to scorn. They were mocking him. And Abaya re-established David as king. Tell me if you wouldn't dance out your bridges too. <laughs> Tell me if you wouldn't have a special song mm. in your heart. That you were placed Matthew, back Matthew on your chapter throne. 11. Give it uh, to me, brother. Matthew chapter 11, verse 16. It said, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. Ah. <laughs> and we have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. Ooh. Ahead, Thank you, my brother. Mm -hmm. but, but isn't it that we're, we're, we're piping to the beat of Hasatan today? This whole world seems to be on a different beat. They're not jamming on the one. That's a whole other lesson. <laughs> That's a whole other lesson. You know, they seem to be piping after another beat, a different piper, the Pied Piper, which is Hasatan. You see, the heart Hallelujah. has a rhythm. You see this jembe? This is how we used to worship back then. It's funny how we look at it now when we see that jembe drum going and we're thinking some kind of African voodoo and some kind of backward kind of thing. When this is how we worship Abaya. The jembe, if, just to give you some contextual history, every house in a Hebrew tribe had one. It was a means of communication. If you watch that movie, um, Roots, and you saw them beating the drums to tell them when to attack, when to go, when to come, when to leave, when, you understand? The jembe was a means. So when somebody died, they played the jembe. When somebody was born, they played the jembe. When you worship Yah, you play the jembe the same way. There are different tones. It was a means of communication. You understand? So when you see this beat going, Mm -hmm. right and you have this beat in your heart your your the rhythm is is a steady one you see life has you like this <laughs> always moving on the go work nine to five and abaya comes and say no 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 get the rhythm get the rhythm slow it down be still and know that i am yeah listen listen take no thought what you're gonna eat and drink tomorrow don't you see the sparrows listen man I, I got them covered. I got you covered. All of a sudden, no, the heartbeat starts to regularize. And then you start to worry and doubt, and it, it starts to speed up again. You're out of timing. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Mm. How am I gonna fix this? Come on. Where am I gonna get the money? How am I gonna pay these bills? Where am I gonna go? No, yeah, so slow down. Get the rhythm. Get the rhythm. Get my rhythm. Get my That's tempo. A good word, bro. Get my tempo. Calm down. Hallelujah. Relax, relax. Settle down. Settle down. 
I want you to focus on my drum. Look, when you're in doubt, just praise me. Just praise me. Let the Psalms, let the song be on your heart. Just praise me. Give me all the praise. And I will settle you down. Settle you down. And you'll understand that I can be on the throne of your heart if you allow me to. And get you in the right rhythm. So that you could conquer this life and don't have life conquer you. Oh. oh my, 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 my. The heart sinks all other body functions. Colossians 3.16. Sister Veli, help me out here. Colossians 3.16. Brother Shane, I want you to get me Proverbs chapter 4.23. And brother Darren, give me Hebrews 9, 12 to 14. My wife, look for First Chronicles. Um, no, no, sorry. Revelations 12, 11. The heart sinks all other functions of the body. If the heart don't pump, how the kidneys go work? If the heart don't pump, how this, how, how, how's, the, how's the liver going to work? Usually how you know a man is dead? The heart stopped beating. The heart sinks all other functions. Give me Colossians 3.16. Who has that? I am... Um... Yeah. Go ahead, Sister Veli. I just lost it. <laughs> Colossians 3, chapter 16. Colossians 3, verse 16. If I want it back. Okay, let me... All right, let me read it now. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get back to you. Oh, we, we're freezing again. The internet is freezing again. Okay, stand by. Colossians 3.16. Let me read it. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to Yahuwah. That was actually for the for verse one. Um, but Proverbs 4.23, who has that? Proverbs 4.23. Who has that? In yeah, Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're sticking again. Proverbs 4.23 Yeah, go ahead, go ahead yeah. Keep thy heart mm -hmm. With all religion Or out of it Are the issues of life Keep thy heart With all diligence You see, we read all the time And we, we, we don't study words The idea of Keeping your heart Means to protect it you understand and not just protect it but keep it functioning i just made the point that the heart sinks all other functions of the body so if we have established the rhythm before and we're now um having this tempo this balanced tempo we have to keep the heart well tuned we have to keep it with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. You see, if you protect this heart, you protect who and what sits on its throne. Let me say that again. If you protect your heart, if you keep your heart, you will determine who and what sits on the heart's throne. 
The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you don't, if you're not careful to keep your heart with all diligence, you will utter some words. Oh my goodness, you probably can't ever take back. You will commit some sins that might be unforgivable. Oh, Abba, you have mercy. This is why you have to keep your heart. Lest next thing you know, you blaspheme and blaspheme against the spirit. And there's only one spirit that can allow himself to blaspheme the Ruach HaKodesh. And that is the spirit of pride. Because that is the sin that got Hasatan kicked out. Now you understand why I'm focusing so much on this pride thing when I started this lesson. That is the spirit that, that you could use to blaspheme the Ruach. You see the spirit of pride? You will say the whole world is going through climate change. That is what all these scientists are telling you. Climate change, climate change. But you will never attribute all these calamities to Abaya. We right now all of a sudden volcanoes are popping off. And before you look to these things and say, let me repent, you are saying it's climate change. Oh my goodness. Yahuwah promised that he's going to bring famine and pestilence and sword. But you have more faith in what the government tells you than to believe Abaya. Come on, brother. So this is what I'm saying. The heart is responsible for how, not just how your body functions, but let's talk spiritually now, but how your soul functions too. Because the issues of this life are bound up in it. Hebrews 9, who has that? 12, 14. Because I'm about to show you that the heart also pumps the blood of the spirit to bring you life hebrews 9 12 to 14 who has that uh, that's me brother go ahead my brother his into the holy place all right so if mm -hmm. the blood of and goats and the ashes of the all right we, we're sticking up we're sticking up here again um okay let me let me read it um neither by the blood of goats i'm sticking okay let me let me just wait a second let me just wait a second am i good again all right neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal and eternal redemption for us so it's not the blood of goats that is going to redeem us it's not the blood of calves it's not even your own blood it's the blood of yahusha that gives us eternal life. So if you are examining your heart, if you're testing your heart, whose blood is pumping? Did Yahusha go to the cross to die so that you could pump your own blood? Do you remember some time ago when I told you when the scientists examined blood? 
that what they see inside of the blood is light. This is why when someone dies and their blood is spilt on the ground, it no longer looks red. Light is what gives that color because light is mixed with water and it becomes red. So when a blood is beyond, your blood is spilt and the blood looks dark on the ground, the light has left the body. The light has left the blood. So which light in your is in your blood right now? Oh, my, 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 my. I'm getting somewhere with this, man. Which light is in your blood? Is it the light from your fallen father, Adam? Or is it our risen savior, the second Adam? Because the seed of Adam will give you one type of light. But the resurrected blood of Yahusha will give you a different type of light. In Hebrews 9, 12 to 14, he says, listen, man. It's neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. You see, this light in this blood traveled somewhere. <laughs> it went to to do a particular function it went to atone so do you have the atoning light in you oh my because this is the only way you're going to obtain eternal the eternal redemption this is the only way that you're going to have new life look at revelations 12 11 you have that revelations 12 11. yes um revelations 12 11 says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony mm -mm. and they loved not their lives unto the death mm. oh my goodness Hallelujah. oh my goodness are you kidding me you see here? Revelations 12. Right? Um, hold on a second here. Revelations 12, chapter 11. Um, chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him. You see, let me go back to 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our elohim and the power of christ of his christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our elohim day and night and day they overcame and him they overcame him how did they overcome him Hallelujah. by their blood by the blood of goats by the blood of lambs? No, no, no. By the blood of the lamb. Oh, my goodness. Yahusha. Hallelujah. And by the word Hallelujah. of his testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. I submit to you, if you have the wrong light inside of you and the spirit of pride is sitting on your heart, you go love your life. And you will never, ever want to die for Yahusha. You will never ever want to die for the truth. You will never ever want to die for this word. You'll never say like Job, I don't care. Yeah, even if you slay me, <laughs> I still will serve you. Oh, man. what kind of faith is that? Is that in your heart? Is that type of faith in your heart? Oh, my, my. I hope I'm making the case here. I hope I am making the case. Right? So, the last thing is this. If you're unsure, if you have now realized 
that there is some other deity on the throne of your heart you need open heart surgery <laughs> oh my my you, you need Abaya to cut you mm, mm. you need him to go to work and you need it right away listen you, you don't you can't even schedule this he's like Abaya come and cut me now now careful how you pray that prayer you know because that prayer is going to come with immediate testing if ever you ask Abaya to go to work and to cut you and you mean it you're in trouble oh my goodness open heart surgery is needed to break all the curses all the curses examining the operations of the heart reveals all your desires and imperfections Somebody give me, brother, brother Bandon, give me Psalm 51, verse 7 to 13. Sister Velia still there? Let me try her again. Because, um, all right, give me Psalms 51, verse 7 to 13. Brother Danny, give me um, Luke chapter 12. Sister Velia, I'm going to try you again. Easy. Brother. Ezekiel I'm chapter. Still, I'm, st I'm still there. Okay, good. Right. Um, give me Ezekiel chapter I'm eleven, verse eighteen to twenty-one. Right. So we're gonna start the brother Brandon Psalm fifty-one, seven to thirteen. Let me see about this open heart surgery now. How how we go? How we go? How we go fix this thing? All right. The word of y'all. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Mm. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Mm. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Mm. Create in me a clean heart. Go to work, God, yeah. Go ahead. And renew a right spirit within me. Mm. Cast me not away from thy presence. Please. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Go ahead. Set apart Ruach from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Come on now. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Restore and what? And then will I teach the transgressors. Restore unto me the joy of thy uh, salvation. Oh, boy, oh, boy. The with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, mm -hmm. and sinners shall be converted mm -hmm. unto thee. Hallelujah. Now, this yeah. is why you need the operation. You need the joy of the salvation of Yah to be restored. Ah, yeah. You see, when you have the joy of Yah, your heart back in rhythm. <laughs> when you have the joy of Yah, that spirit of pride has to go. Um, got to go so you, you're asking Abia to go to work creating me a clean heart when you are right spirit with, look get to cutting get to slicing me get to fixing this heart take off that tomb of pride cut it out and when you finish with me Abia please don't turn your face from me mmm Hallelujah. Oh, my. When you finish cutting me up, I know I don't look, I, I, I don't feel I look too right still. I'm ashamed that you had to do so much work. Please don't turn your face from me. But uphold me. Hold me in your arms now, Abaya. Hold me up. Uphold me with your free spirit. Hallelujah. My yeah, look. You see, when you've gone through stuff, this sound personal to you, man. It's not just a, a, another chapter, another verse. This should be a part of your daily prayer. Hold me, Abaya. Hold me. Don't let me go. No, you fix my heart. What if, if if you ask any surgeon? 
after a surgery it's the care that comes after that's critical oh my that will determine if you survive or not the aftercare ah man so when you cut me don't leave me <laughs> please abaya don't leave me don't let me go i need to recover I need, I need you, you Abaya, to Abaya, help me recover. And so. <laughs> you want to say something, my wife? Yeah, um, I was saying. So there, there's actually an exchange that happens. Is it's almost like you're saying that, that there's a life for life. <laughs> so now, when Yah's blood comes into you, then you go back to Ezekiel. What he was prophesying that these these dead bones now become alive. Oh come on now! You understand? It's no no breath is in you, so you start to function a different type of way. Oh um, my yeah. goodness! So ah. and you start to speak life. You start to speak life. Actually, not to yourself, Ooh. but to others. Hallelujah! You yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> That's it! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So, what kind of thing is this now? open heart surgery the truth breaks the shackles from your heart and allows you to feel again the problem with me look let me tell you something this is you know the reason why that we prayed that prayer that brother brandon just read oh my it, after a while you stop feeling when you sin too much and your heart becomes stony you can't feel you can't feel it's a scary place to be when you can't feel the effects of your own sin oh my 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 because when that happens the fear of yah departs oh. so now you start to sin presumptuously licentiously and at will oh my there used to be some sort of fearful expectation of even death when you transgress the love abaya before but no it almost as if now your heart like pharaoh has become hardened i want you to mm. think about this for a second pharaoh was beholding abaya in front of him that is who moses or uh, moshe was to him Yah said, I'm going to make you like a god to Pharaoh. As far as Pharaoh is concerned, you are God. Because you are my representative. That is what the scripture said, you know. And in front of the presence of Abaya, Pharaoh just blasphemed left, right, and center. And Yah said, you know what? I even harden his heart. I want you to understand something. This is the last hour. We're in the last hour of this 400 year captivity. And Yahuwah is about to judge the nations, plural. And I submit to you, Yahuwah is examining hearts right now. Come on, bro. And Yahuwah is going to do one or two things. He's either going to loose the bands of iniquity from your heart. Or he's going to do you what he did to Pharaoh. And harden it. So whatever state Abaya finds you in right now. He's going to seal you. Oh my goodness. My goodness. He is going to seal you when he comes to visit you now whatever states he, he finds you in in this last hour he is going to seal you so you better start examining your heart now <laughs> got to you better start to purge out and throw out every idol off your heart now 
right now there's no time left none none if you are full of pride that brings all the other wicked wicked sins with it you'll not be ready to receive anything from Avaya. Let, let me read this real quick brother matthew chapter help me out my brother matthew chapter 13 verse 10 starting at verse 10 goes in with what you're saying mm -hmm. it says and the disciples came i was talking about this yesterday mm -hmm. the disciples came and said unto him why speakest thou unto them in parables mm. and he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven mm. but to them it is not given for whoever has to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance but whoever has not from him shall be taken away even that he has in response oh, to what you're talking man, about man. the hardening of the heart or the loosening of the bands mm. that's so important right now mm. where are you, where are we standing right now as far as our heart condition according to what Abba Yah has given to us the grace that he has given to us mm -hmm. go ahead brother I'll oh my you. goodness bring that out for me my brother oh my good listen here man at the end of the day we are going to have to be tried by this, 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 this wonderful Elohim. Because if it's one thing we can't ever say about Abaya, that he was not long suffering, he was not patient. You see all these things happening throughout all these years and people still will not repent. Are you telling me that the whole world locked down and people still will not repent? people have have been shopping this christmas like they like like never before in fact they tell you that the sales went through the roof with the frivolous things that people are spending their money on now and mind you know come january and they're broken you know? some of them waiting for stimulus check down here we're waiting for the almost the same thing with 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 with, with social security oh boy all right all right yes okay my family is back okay yeah so open heart surgery that is what we were discussing and we said that we have to examine the operations of the heart examining the, oper the operations of the heart reveals all your desires and imperfection Luke chapter 12. Luke yes, chapter 12. Who had that? Verse 33 I did. and 34. Oh, verse. Yeah, uh, 33. I you and... wanted the whole chapter. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chapter 12, verse 33 and 34. Uh -huh. All right. Luke chapter 12, verse 33 and 34 reads Sell your possessions and give in kindness. Make is the uh, purses which do not grow old a treasure in the shamayim or the heavens that does not fail when no thief comes nor when no thief comes near nor moth destroys mm. for where your treasure is there your heart shall be so ah where your treasure is yes, there will your heart be also sell all that ye have and give arms that's right <laughs> sell all that ye have and give arms hey, look those are the kind of verses right that bother me you know if you're honest with yourself it should bother you too you know mm. <laughs> can i cut you can i cut a little deep into that heart of yours let me see Will you, if you Come had on, to, sell all that you no have? More. Sell all that you... Look, 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 look. Mm. Look, y'all need to stop reading the Bible for just reading sake, you know? I examine every word. Like Brother Brandon just said a while ago, it's the talents that Yahuwah has given you. If you don't use them, he gonna take them away. And give them to somebody else. 
Will you sell all that you have and give up? Would you wake up one day and just say, I gotta sell my fridge, my car, my stove, my furniture, the clothes in the closet. I go into the bank. I'm going to empty my account. I'm going to empty my account and give arms. Oh boy. Devil don't want me to get out this lesson yet today, boy. Let me hold on. Let me hold on. It will come back. It will come back. It will come back. Right? So, y'all can hear me? All right, good. Yeah. Will you sell all that you have and give arms? Oh my goodness. Brother Brandon and I were talking about a story there of, of our Jeeps. Brother Danny too. And we say, look, sometimes, you know, people get the wrong impression sometimes when they see you and how you're rolling, you know. Because especially when they don't have it. But you want to come talk about the gospel. You want to come talk about the word of, of Abaya. Hey, you want to come talk about the word of Abaya. And you know, you see me struggling. And you're telling me, go be warm and, and be filled. I'm not talking about bums, you know. I'm talking about a hardworking man, you know. But no bum can tell me I, de I deserve to give him everything. But you need to understand, understand scripture. You understand? You need to understand and make sure you understand the, the, the scriptures properly. This is what Christianity does sometimes, you know. But, but at the end of the day, you see a man struggling. And you have the means to help. And you refuse to help. But the scripture here is not telling you to give him something, you know. This scripture says, sell all. Where have I seen this before, man? I keep every, almost every lesson, I keep talking about when Yahushua was talking to the rich young ruler. You know why I keep talking about it? Because it bothered me. This rich young ruler, <laughs> this rich young ruler was not an unrighteous man. If you look at the man accolades, he was no Pharisee. The man said he he, he tied, he gave his offering, he he um he did good a lot of good deeds, and he worshipped Abaya. That Yahusha himself told the man, "Good, good." That's a good thing that you've done. But this one thing you lack is as if Yahusha looked through the man's eyes and he saw his heart. He saw the condition of his heart. And he was about to go to work on his heart and do surgery. Open heart mm. surgery right in front of the man. This one thing you lack yes, sell all you have all mm. your possessions all your possessions and give to the poor and follow me come on and say it again brother brandon and come follow, follow me. me i didn't get to the follow part yet i still stuck on the sell all you have just like the rich man <laughs> because I guarantee you the rich man did not hear follow me all he heard was I'm going to have to do what now? <laughs> sell all and give to who now? The poor. the poor you don't know how hard I work for this money you don't know how, why, how many nights I have to stay up and work 2, 3, 4 jobs to get this money how I have to hustle hard to get this Give to who now? Because Yahusha saw the rich man's heart condition. And he said, you know Come what? On. There is something sitting on your throne. 
on the throne of your heart and it's not me i want you to get rid of it and come follow me <laughs> i want you throw it away because you mm. remember how this rich man greeted greeted um yahusha good oh good uh, good lord yeah, we should say, why you call me good? So right away, Yahusha already the juice. Oh, this man love the look of things. This is the pride of life. Hallelujah. We like to associate ourselves mm. with certain type of people. Hey, General, big boss. We like, we, we, we like, um, I tell you, I tell you about this pride, you know. It's a subtle sin. It looks good on the outside, but inside it's full of dead men's bones. This 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 pride thing. That's right. Will make a Pharisee look at the King of Kings and tell him, "You must be working the works of Beelzebub." Yeah, we should have to ask, can Hasatan cast out Hasatan? I will get to that in another another topic. Huh? It's pride. Go ahead, brother Danny. You want to say something? No, yeah. I'm just listening to you, brother. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and, I mean, it's mm -hmm. Go it's, ahead. A, it's a it's amazing how um, you know, the point that you just made, you know, who should expose him, mm. you know, as something that he was deficient in. Mm. So you know, that was an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the end of the day. We, 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 if you're going to do open heart and surgery, you got to do it properly because we got to break these curses. Yahushua was saying, look, you see all the, even these good things you're doing, if you're not doing it with the right motive and the right heart, it's a curse on your life. Now, here am I, the curse breaker, the I restorer of the breach. <laughs> Listen, get rid of that and come follow me. Hallelujah. Come follow me. But you see, Praise if we don't Lord. see Yahusha as the pearl of great price, the thing in which we'll sacrifice everything and anyone for, you'll be just like that rich man. And you'll be stuck on stupid right there at sell all I have. I got to sell this car that will... That is fleeting. I gotta sell my furniture. That is fleeting. I gotta sell my house. That is fleeting. All these things that are going to return to dust. <laughs> oh, you want to hear the irony of all ironies? If you follow the king, can you starve? No. If you follow the king, will you not be sheltered? <laughs> if you follow the king, Hallelujah. will you not will mm. your soul be not satisfied? You see, if you don't believe these things, this thing is not for you, no. This mm -hmm. thing not for you, no. Go go stay stay with your riches. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with that, that's, go ahead, that's my brother. So true, man, because um <clears throat> man, one thing, um, you know, stuff that we used to talk about, you know, in transitioning, you know, used to um you know, I used to worry about at first, like, man, this is a big shift that I'm trying to take and, and all the stuff that you leave them behind and all this stuff and, and it had to hit me like a ton of bricks it's like you know so what's more important you know huh. coming after me serving me you know bringing your family in, in a um a more faith conducive environment or or, or all of this that you you know that you want to be unwilling to leave behind mm. so yeah, man, it's, it's a doozy. That's a you know? wonderful point there. That's listen, and here's the thing, you know, mm. you you got to realize and get to the point where you say, look, I I'm not following no man. 
I not following no man's mm. doctrine. I'm going to leave all to follow Christ. Wherever he leads, I will follow. And anybody See? that refuse right. to follow him, to hell with them. Oh, Lord. I just be too harsh sometimes, you know. Hallelujah. Anything look, anything outside mm. of Christ, run. Mm. There are some people that, that would preach Christ, but you have to do this and do this and wear this and look like this. Anybody preaching anything other than what Christ mm. did or said, run. Mm -hmm. If Christ it's did, so funny. Go it's ahead, so my funny brother. too, brother. Let me say this. Go ahead. It's so funny too, brother, that you're talking about that because I looked at a. This was a Stephen Darby I looked at a while back, but I remember him saying something like, "This is." The thing. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on a second, brother. You should always resort back to this. You should. Oh yeah, go ahead again, though, because you're you're timing out a while ago. I want to make sure I get this. Yeah, go ahead, say it again. Okay, he was like you. He was like you. Always got to get back to this, and he was talking about that very first word, that very first word that Yeshua said when he did his ministry, as well as as well as the very first word that John the Baptist said when he did his ministry, mm -hmm. and that's repent. Mm. And um. And it falls in line, it falls in line with that because when you talk about the heart transplant, you talk about a man's heart, it goes right back to what Jeremiah said. The heart is desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Who can know it? And it's a, it's the deception of the heart. It's the hidden sin that dwells in the heart. The thing about it is the heart so deceptive, it aligns to the person who carried it. Just like the rich young ruler, the rich young ruler, I mean, he wasn't expecting that. He nah. came to the to the <laughs> to the to the Messiah. He came to to Yeshua looking for a different response. And before you you had cut out for a little while, and I begun to talk to them the same thing I was going to talk to y'all about yesterday. Mm -hmm. But it was the same concept. I ain't gonna go through all of them. But each one of those things that he gave to Moses is how powerful and all knowing and foreseeing our Father is. Each sign he gave to Moses. When he first talked to Moses at the burning bush was a representation of three things. The first one was the law. The first one was the law. The first the law. The first one was the law. The law is the law is a representation of the knowledge of good and evil. It's, a, mm. it's the representation of, of that very thing that will strike you if you drop it, mm. just like it, it built them up. But we don't get into that. Second one is a representation of sin. Why? And that's the one I want to... You're talking about the heart. And once he pulls it out, it was leprous, a yes. different color. And the issue, my issue was that was like, why he told him to hide his hand? That's a whole because sermon that name, my brother. Sin. Go ahead. That Go ahead, man. Sin, that Bring was it out. the sin of Israel. Woo! They were hypocrites. They wanted to hide. That's why he said, if I had not spoken unto you, you would have had a cloak for mm. your sin. But because I've spoken unto you, this thing keeps sticking up. Hold on there, my brother. I don't want to miss this. Hold on there, my brother. Hold on there. Oh, boy, you're sticking. Hold on there, my brother. Well, yeah, that, that's the whole piece of it. Is that situation. Oh, man. It's all... And he said the Pharisees, oh, thank you. You remember he was telling, he said, thank you. I fast this amount of times a day. I pray and I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm not like this sin over here. <laughs> mm. And the sinner got on his knees and say, what? Well, oh, boy, breaking up bad, but... When you repent and you, you confess your sin, you know what you're doing. You're oh, man, it got again. Oh boy. 
about the situation. Let's See, but the problem is, and this, and that's why you talked about pride. Pride is a very, very deceptive thing. It's a very deceptive thing. The reason why pride is so deceptive because people look at pride in one form. Like take for uh, take for instance, the uh, the brother John the Baptist, and even he had the testimony. What was the testimony? Testimony. He said, "Ain't no, ain't no man so much greater than John." Hmm. But John, hmm. now you saying that John was out there with, with a sackcloth, and I heard this from Stephen Darby talking about this. He had a sackcloth, and he had a, um, you know, he was eating honey and all that type of stuff. Most but I never looked at that. I said, "That's a humble man." What can you say about that man? But sure enough, when he got locked up. He said, are you the one that should we look for another? So, wait, if you got to understand, that was not, now it took, now that said, it was still a form of pride that he even possessed. Yep. So you got to understand yep. what area of pride for one man, yep. you might be able to conquer that. Yep. But it's a different form that you say, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't walk that room. I'm embarrassed mm. to walk that room. I can do this. I can humble myself this way. But uh uh-uh. uh, no, 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 no. Mm. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pride myself on being this type of person. People know me as this way. My mm. name is connected to this type of this type of being exalted and this type of pomp and praise. So I can't humble myself in that manner. But see, mm. that's wow. what I'm trying to tell you. What's going to come? See, and this is why this is where the heart transplant comes in. Once mm. you see it, see, all all Abba y'all want us to do is to see it. Yeah. Expose it. Um, Okay. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I net suck. Stand, stand by, brethren. You back on? Still on? But the longer you hide your hand, like he told Moses, put your hand in your robe. And when, if you hide your hand, once you pull it out, it's going to be leprous. Ain't going to be no healing for it. Because hmm. the moment you hide yourself is the moment you destroy yourself. Hmm. The moment you try to put yourself hmm. away and say, I ain't, ain't nothing wrong, I'm good. Hmm. The moment you do that, that's the moment where you lose it all. Go ahead, bro. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Man, oh, man. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I missed a lot of what Brother Brandon's... I got the gist of it, but the, the internet has been awful today. Um, I do apologize. Yeah. Um, we're going to go back. I'll have to go back with Digicel when I'm doing these um, broadcasts. Um, but I, okay. my brother, that was so powerful, man. And look at this, too, you know. Even John's disciples were full of, were, were full of pride. But they were watching Yahusha's um, disciple and they asked him, Why y'all not fasting? <laughs> Yahusha mm-hmm. to remind them, I'm here. Mm. I'm right. They have no reason to fast. I'm here. So they, they got this, this, this spirit of pride from the one who they were following too John the Baptist. That's a very good point. You know? So, at, at the end of the day, I just want to continue to encourage you, brethren. Let me see if we can finish up this thing while the internet is still good. Because uh, I don't know what's going on here, boy. Um, and this is a... Hold on a second. This is a powerful lesson that we have today. Right? Um, and I'm praying that we all... This is not for you. This is for everybody, including myself. Because what I do, especially when I finish these lessons, I have to go and pray. Because I'm going to get the greatest judgment, you know. What, whatever you speak of, that is what Yahoo is going to judge you with, you know. So careful what you say. Oh, mm. man. That, that, oh, yi, 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 yi. Praise and glory. Hallelujah. You, you have no idea how inadequate we are. And I think that is what Brother Brandon was trying to show, you know. That, that the sins that we have, they're hidden. It's not, it's not all them... To the face where we can see okay we can pinpoint that pinpoint this and pinpoint that 
So this is why I'm trying to show you at the root of pride. If you can get to the root and find pride anywhere in your heart, you get a bunch load of sins together that you can, you can pull out. Because the minute you become humble, you're going to inherit the earth. Um, did the Bible say the proud is going to inherit the earth? Is the proud people or the meek? You see, well, look, when you when you become humble, you know, everything slow down in life, you know. Everything slow down. You're not anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. Nobody can on, get bro. you angry too easy. So how are you gonna respond in an angry manner to people when when you are always taking things slow? Waiting for Yahuwah to give you a word. You're not always ready to jump up to speak. But when you speak, you speak with such power because the word of Yah is, is resting on your heart. It's settling you. It's Hallelujah. bringing back that rhythm of life. You're taking things one step at a time. You, you're never flustered. You, 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 you're never anxious. You're never, you're never bamboozled. You're not tricked easily. And you, you, you can spot a deception coming a mile away when Yahoo is sitting on your heart. You, you can start to read people in different ways now. Hallelujah. When Yahoo said, test the spirit to see whether it's good or evil, you think it's a joke? People come into your life and you can look at them right away and say, this person not right for me. Where do you think <laughs> that come from? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where do you think that come from? That is when you have a right heart and a right spirit. But like heart conditions attract like heart conditions. So if you have a bad heart, you're going to meet bad people. <laughs> Listen, Hallelujah. You, you're going to be... <laughs> you're going to surround yourself with people like that. If you have a good heart, you're going to want to surround yourself with the right people. You know, just I didn't say good people. Mm. Even Yahoo should say, why you call me good? I want to make sure you know who good people is. Because I would tell mm -hmm. you, I meet someone or other society people call bad man, and I will trust them with anything rather than to trust the well-dressed <coughs> politician that the people call honorable. Come on, bro. Oh, man. I hit it. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble now. Who you call honorable? Who you call right honorable? Who, who is distinguished in your society? It's the people that have a heart for Abaya and have a heart for people. Those are the people who have the correct heart condition that they don't have the curses on their life that you should associate yourself with. Because Abaya even warned you, do not sit in the council of the ungodly. You know why? Because mm. when the plagues are coming, you're getting them too. When the curses are coming, they're coming for you too. The Bible warns you that anger sits in the heart, in the bosom of a man. So if you are friend with an angry person, you don't love your life. Look, we see this thing all the time in the States, you know. You lime with a partner, he bad like yard. <laughs> and somebody come and do a drive-by shooting, bullet coming, you catch a bullet too. You got to be careful with what you associate your, mm. your spirit with. Because people are not just people. They are spirits, they are ruaks. Why is this important with, with testing your heart? Because you have to see, wait, what is my heart attracting? So when people come to you, are they transformed by your ruach? Because the light that is emanating out of your heart speaks the truth at all times. Speaks the goodness of Yah at all times. I hope I'm not sticking again. Because here's the thing curses are lifted 
when the face of Yah is allowed to shine in a man's heart. Give me Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 18 to 21. Who has that? Oh, my star sticking again. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 18 to 21. And we go, we go end it there. Let me see. Um, Ezekiel chapter 11. Yo. Verses 18 to 21. Brother Danny, you have it? I can get it. Yeah. Um, 18 to 21? Yeah. Okay, um, Ezekiel chapter 11 verses 18 through 21 reads, And they shall go there and shall take away all its filthiness and all its abominations from thee. And now I shall give them one heart and put a new spirit within you. Mm. And I, I shall out of their flesh and give them a as they walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them, and they shall be my people, and I shall be the of filthiness, and the army shall recompense on their heads, the heads, the Adon, Yahweh. My goodness. Let me read that again. And they shall yes, come sir. thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations mm. thereof. They're going to move everything I hate off their heart. It's not just you, you have to remove it physically, but first you have to remove mm. it spiritually. You got to hate the thing that I hate. You, you love what I love, and you hate what I hate. Oh my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so they remove oh, the detestable things thereof and all the abominations from thence you see then you see once they start hating i hate now hear this now i am going to give them one heart why is it important for us to have one heart i could have given danny a heart i could have given brother shane a heart brother brandon a heart no, 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 no. I'm going to give them one heart. Because the heart moves to the beat of the drum. So when mm. everybody starts to move in unison. One accord. And one accord. <laughs> one faith. One Elohim. One word. One language. Mm. One precept. Mm. When you start to move together as one, mm. you have an army. You have an oh, army. Man. Uh, that moves to the beat of the drum. So when that jembe sound, we're moving together as Yasharal. Oh my goodness. A nation is being built again. A nation is being restored. A, a heritage is being restored. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their That's wicked it. sins then will i hear from heaven then i will forgive them of their sins and will heal heal the land. oh boy when yahoo restor re restores this one heart this one and give us this new heart we're going back to zion as an army Oh my, are you ready? Mm. Are you nice. ready? You can't come in this land with the old heart. Because you're going to be out of timing. <laughs> you cannot come into Zion with the old heart. That have Babylon mixed up all in it. So you better sell all you have. If, it, if Babylon on it, Here's news. Here's a tip. Sell it. <laughs> Get rid of it. And follow Yahusha to Zion. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh. 
our roads. Praise and glory to lead to Zion. You know the reason why Yahusha said it's hard for a rich man to get into the eye of a needle? The eye of a needle is not the needle that you sew with. The needle is a gate. So when you come in full up with all them baggage and bags, you can't come through. In order for the camel to come through, you have to get rid of all that. I let the camel pass through that little eye of the needle, let that little door open it. You can't come into the kingdom with Babylon's goods. Oh my, I, I, oh my. You're gonna have to, it's, be, it's might as well you sell all you have now. Well, and, and I'm saying to go and get empty out your fridge now and you're hungry tomorrow. No, I did not say that, lest you can say, Rafi tell to do that. <laughs> I didn't tend to go to the pawn shop now and go pawn everything you have. <laughs> <laughs> and me a blame me and next thing you know, every, all of you at my don't expect me to feed you. <laughs> because with everything, there must be a level of responsibility. But yeah, you see, Yahusha was present. The bridegroom was present. So of course the rich man should have sold all he have and hold on to the pearl of great price. <laughs> Right now, Yahuwah is saying, you still have to have that frame of mind. You got to be given. In other words, you got to give till it hurts. Oh, my, my. You go and give somebody a $5. What $5 can do? Come on now. Chump change. Find somebody. Else. You know what? I'm going to help them. <laughs> Many of you not you're not in church now. A lot of people who are listening to this, they're not in church today. This is this is the closest thing they have to an assembly. The tithe that you used to give willingly to the church. Oh my goodness, take that and go bless somebody else now. Cover somebody bill. Buy some food. You have 10 jerseys. Oh my, give away one now. Let me see who look. Don't you understand that these are the things that fashion your heart? These are the things that put oh, yeah. the light in your heart? And Yahushua says, when I come and I see that, when you call, <laughs> I say, here am I, right here. Hallelujah. <laughs> you are always wow. given. It's time for me to give you. Oh boy, oh boy. So I would say freely, Yahusha caught me. You see, this is what the apostle didn't understand when Yahusha was washing his feet, you know. He said, How dare you, Yahusha, wash my feet? He said, Look, Yahusha, just look up, look up at it. Let me tell you something, right? You now get the ill everlasting life. Let me speak properly. You are not getting everlasting life unless I wash your feet. Well, oh, when it comes to that, wash my head, wash my whole body, and my, right down to my toe. <laughs> it's the he same. said that's the case, not just the feet. Come on. <laughs> uh, come on, listen, man. We have to realize, no, the kingdom is at hand. You got to prepare now like never before. That means you have to pack light. You can't have nothing to be set. Imagine. Disaster coming at your door and you have 10 suitcases mm. to go run with. How are you going to manage that? No. Oh, you pack light. Let me get one bag with all these essentials. My, my bug out bag. I got to be able to move with this bug out bag. You we'll understand? With all the stones. Exactly. <laughs> must keep breaking up. You know? But this is the reason why a lot of people usually get trapped when disasters come, you know? Because they're in their house trying to move everything that they think is important to them. Fire bus out and you're more concerned about your PlayStation than your passport and your, your other documents. You see, you, you never had a plan. Fire broke out in your house. You understand? And you're trying to move the things that are irrelevant. 
in this life right now with this 2021 you see all them stuff happening fire broken out are you ready have you packed your bags are you prepared to go are you still mm. counting what you your possessions and you're finding it too hard to sell all you have Mm-hmm. Say that again, my wife. No, it's in gird your lines. How you go gird your lines? You know, gird your, gird your line. Pull up, pull up, pull up your arm. Um, your, 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 uh, back then, the man of them used to look like they have on dress. Eh? So when they're ready to fight, they have to pull up the bottom part uh, of of um the the um the garment and tie it to go fight. So when you see a man tie up his garments, like when you see a woman take off her earring, you, you're not fighting, something about to go down. You see a woman take off her earring, something is about to go down. That's right. <laughs> right? So gird your lines. That is, the, that is the season that we're in right now. So how is it that you're not ready? Because your heart not right. And that's the basis of, I know we've been long. But that's the basis of this lesson right here because we we want all the curses all the generational curses all the curses that came with pride and all the sins and all the other things that we put upon the throne of our heart and displaced abaya to go we're not going in this kingdom with any baggage in fact we know we can't enter in if our heart is not pure because the most I made it clear, only the pure in heart will see Abaya. Only the pure on. in heart. Hallelujah. So how can a man purify his heart if you still have all them baggage? Listen, man, I got three simple steps for you here. Kill your pride and practice humility. Fill your heart with light. Step number two. And walk with the Ruach. Learn to die daily. This is step number three. And become the son of man. Dethrone the idols sitting on your heart. Give no more room for devils to capture your heart. This is what happened to Solomon, you know. After getting all the glory of Abaya, Abaya had to come to him again in a dream. And say, look, man, you're taking this thing too far, you know. Let me get to the root of the matter. Don't let these things take away your heart from me. Mm. You want to know what will make Abaya discard you and throw you away? Is if you take your heart for something else. The Bible said, Jacob, I love Isa, I hate it. This is from birth, you know. You know why I hate Isa? Isa sell out Abaya's birthright for a bowl of pottage. What will you sell the truth and the gospel of Abaya for? More sex? More power? More money? A better look in society? People don't even really look... look yeah, it's amazing how we love to put on ears of people that can't stand us. I just hate the fake, the hate, the fakery, you know. That's why I call it fakery. You know, these these frenemies and these these these, these people that we we say hi to every day that don't mean no good for you. They, ta- they you know they're talking you behind your back, but you still want to look good in their eyes. <laughs> That you 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 sell out Abaya. I, I, I looking I looking a bit too. Ch- I, I remember when I used to have to walk in my Bible to church and then have transportation. I remember that sometimes I used to hide my Bible in my pocket. But I look, it's holding the things Abaya had to slap me down for you know. It's no, it's no wonder I have it so you know. Okay. I, I had to start to get to the place where I was bold, and you know what? I bought a bigger Bible. Boy, the Bible no, the Bible is heavy. But I didn't care. Because everybody got to know this is who I love. You understand? I'm going to church with the big right. Bible it, 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 and, and it was torn too. It wasn't even an attractive one. You understand? But listen, 
This is who we are. We put on ears for people. Give no more rooms for devils to capture your heart. And lastly, recapture the light of Yahusha yeah. to heal your heart, mind, body, and soul. James 4, 8, mm. draw night to Yah, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Can't have no mind for Babylon and have a mind for Yah. Mm. Choose this day who you will serve. 1 Timothy 1, 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of unfeigned faith. Brethren, this is the end of the lesson. This is the test of hearts. I hope you will pray to the throne, the idol sitting on your heart. I hope you will do it today. I hope you do it every day. That you examine yourself to see whether you'll be of the faith to see if you're walking right with Yahuwah and he sits on the throne of your heart. In Revelation, he said, Behold, I stand at the door. I'm knocking. I'm not waiting. He's knocking. He's knocking on your heart. Are you going to let me in? Are you going to allow that wicked spirit of pride, that wicked spirit to continue to sit on that throne of your heart? Because mm -hmm. he's not going to knock forever, you know. He's not going to knock forever. I've already established my truth in you. And you see now that you've woken up to this truth. How you go still be dilly dallying? Look, you're not fit for this kingdom, you know. Don't let Yahuwah have to tell you those words. Examine your heart mm -hmm. now and purge yourself of all these things that will not let you get to Zion. That will not get let Yahuwah's face to shine upon you. Because if his face don't shine upon you, you know. Do you know his face shining upon you is the mercy seat? Do you know that there are two seats of Abaya? The mercy seat and the judgment seat. And depending on who you are, you will face him in one of these capacities. So if you is is like is like oh my goodness, I don't even want to put this. You know, it's like when you're talking to your child. You know, depending on what they do, they will get the, the right type of face. <laughs> you will get the face that says, "Yeah, you can come sit on my lap now," or you you can get the face that I'm about to turn that hide. There are two faces of Abaya: the mercy seat and the judgment seat. Which will you go before? Oh, I, I, in which seat um, will, will you stand? Will Abaya have mercy on you? I'm knocking. I'm knocking. Are you going to let me in? I'm knocking. Are you going to let me in so I can restore the rhythm of your heart? Or do you have to stand before me now at the judgment seat where I have to cut you down? <laughs> ah, Brother Brandon, close us out in prayer unless anyone has anything else to add. I know we've been long today, but I did it on purpose because mm. all of us have a heart condition we have to examine. Anybody has anything else to add? This is a time messy. Um, you know, we, we, we really need to um, examine ourselves, you know, mm. whether to see whether and truly we be of the faith. You know, mm. him that thinketh he standeth, we, we, we better take heed, Man. you know, unless you fall. Yes. Mm. Very timely message, bro. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes, yes, yes. The root of all wisdom is the fear If you want to live longer Then fear ya You love pain is love